going on all you wonderful a plusers out there it is i Stuart here once again with another common writer review coming right at you today uh those of you who are wondering what is with the doofy sunglasses well that is to hide the fact that i have not slept in the last couple of days so with that all being said let's get right into this review i'm going to be totally honest and let you guys know that this is probably going to be the shortest review i've done of the series um not because this was a bad episode or anything but because in terms of like plot i think this one definitely had the least amount going for it compared to all the other episodes that have come before it uh which isn't a bad thing in fact i was actually a part of me was kind of relieved about this because i feel like episode after episode these last seven episodes um there's just been so much exposition so much things that have been going on you know it's just been like uh, it almost feels like i'm having to take notes not as a reviewer but as a common viewer as well no pun intended uh so i was kind of relieved that this was just kind of a chill enjoy the moment type of episode and it seems like you know there was plot re relevant things that happened in it but nothing that there wasn't like a, a huge dump of exposition or anything like that so you know a relief for me but I definitely want to know if you guys feel the same way about this definitely let me know in the comments below but guys let's get right into this so our episode starts with uh, Toma not figuring out how to essentially unlock the full potential of Excalibur which is so what's interesting to me about this scene though is that from the way the last episode took off I actually thought we were supposed to be getting like more trials with Toma in this episode uh, but I was actually completely wrong about that apparently the trial that they were referring to more just kind of uh, had to do with he has to kind of like prove himself worthy uh, outside of fighting you know the monster that was protecting Excalibur or, or something like that you know uh, kind of confusing in that sense I guess the only like kind of part of the episode where I'm like wait what's going on but other than that you know the rest of the episode gets uh, pretty strange forward from here on out um so the the team does eventually regroup and we finally get to see that may uh you know gets to see the base of operations which i thought was pretty cool um you know she's definitely gotten in the way with the common writers a few times but i feel like she's also done enough to prove that she can uh hold her own just fine i mean she's also done uh just as many things to kind of like help out the common writers so to me i feel like she's just as much of an asset as she can be a reliability sometimes um so it, it's kind of it, it kind of feels like a uh, gamble with her and i feel like the writers kind of know this and that's probably why they are at first like a little worried that she's she's now at the base of operations but they're not like mad about it they're just kind of like going with the flow at this point they're kind of like you know what she's gonna she's gonna stick around no matter what we try to do to stop her from sticking around so let's just you know enjoy it and try to see if we can use her to help us out when we can and and things like that which again i think is pretty smart for the writers anyways so um as the team regroups they find out that of course only one of the three cities that disappeared has returned this is because there were actually three medusas released in the previous episode i'm starting to notice a pattern here we seem to get like a monster of the week we think that monster is defeated but then there's there always turns out to be more of that exact monster uh later on usually in the common writer shows that i've seen so far um whenever they repeat monsters it's usually not in the very next episode it's usually a few episodes down the line so here it's kind of like it, it almost feels like they're trying to get all the the repeat monsters out of the way essentially just like okay we know we're eventually going to be coming back to these monsters anyways let's just do it now to get it all over with that's anyways that's the vibe i get from it so of course the writers go and this is awesome because it's the first time we get to see all five of the writers fighting side by side now of course we don't have all of the writers yet we're still waiting for slasher uh because you know their uh weapons guy is still not ready to go into the battlefield he kind of reminds me in that sense of uh terry from the very first season of brooklyn 99 when he's like too afraid to go out in battle although we don't really know why uh common writer slasher hasn't been like interested in going to battle yet uh, uh, I'm sure that'll get explained sometime later on down the line. I am very curious to find out why this is. So the writers unfortunately get their butts kicked by uh, Medusa, which I did not see coming. I was actually a little disappointed by this, not in the writing, but just disappointed as a viewer because I was really expecting that amazing teamwork moment. But unfortunately, they went into this battle with no teamwork, no strategy in mind. They just went in there expecting it to be an easy fight, and it just took simply caliber 
Hammer's interference to uh, essentially screw that whole thing up, uh, causing the uh, the uh, Common Riders to get overwhelmed and eventually causing Ogami to be turned to stone. Unfortunately, the riders do have to retreat, feeling very defeated, with Toma having to deliver the news to Sora, Ogami's son. But there is a little bit of a cute moment from this. Sora isn't worried at all. You know, he says, my dad is tough and he's going to make it through this. I, I just know it. Um, I really like this moment and I think it really helped Toma out because at this point, Toma really had his head hanging very low to the ground. And I think having like a little kid, like trying to tell him to man up and everything, even though his dad is the one who's in trouble. I think that was just the, the wake up call that Toma needed essentially uh, to really think of a new strategy. Strategy. And we get probably my favorite thing about this episode. Toma comes up with a strategy by writing a story. Um, and I think this is actually quite brilliant. There, there's always been that thing about Toma I love that he relates books um, to how they defeat their monsters of the week, things like that. And that's something about Toma's character that I've always really enjoyed. And I think I finally figured out why that was. So, you know, personally for me as a kid, uh, you know, I definitely was not the easiest student to deal with in school. I definitely had a lot of issues when it came to learning and, th and things like that. Um, so I always had to find my own way of doing things when it came to school. Specifically, for me, it was particularly math. Uh, whenever the teachers would tell us like how we were supposed to do our math problems, um, it would only confuse me a lot more. So I would always come up with my my own way to solve math problems that to my opinion you know always helped me personally a lot better and then anytime I try to explain my strategy to other students or other teachers they would think that I'm just like doing more work than that than what's necessary even though to me the the strategies I used would be a lot more helpful that's what I kind of get from Thomas character here is that he sees the world in his own very unique way through the eyes of books and stories so that ends up being how he solves a lot of his problems as we've seen in the past him using books that he's read Read both fiction and nonfiction to solve like uh, you know issues when it comes to the monsters and I do like it how he's using his whole love of writing stories to write out a strategy of how they can uh, stop this particular situation it's brilliant uh, and I think it's something that you know if I as an adult can relate to I'm sure there are definitely a lot of kids out there that can definitely relate to something like this so um, you know I don't know if this scene like hit other people the same way it did hit me but oh my gosh I just gotta say this was kind of brilliant on the uh, writer's uh, uh, perspective uh, anyways so moving on <laughs> sorry I had to get my rant out there because I, again you know that scene almost kind of uh, gave me a little tear in my eye it was just so beautiful <laughs> So anyways, the, the writers then move on uh, with a new strategy in mind. They use Toma's story to figure out how it is that they're going to stop the Medusa. So this time when they all show up, they are prepared for Calibur. The new strategy is to have Ren and Kento go after Calibur since they are clearly the more skilled fighters out of the bunch, while Toma and Rintaro take down the two Medusas since they've both shown that they can take down Monsters of the Week just fine on their own. Um, through the power of friendship, and I'm actually not even really over-exaggerating here, uh, Toma does eventually unlock the power of uh, Excalibur. And um, as for the power of friendship thing, I'm like, kind of not really kidding. Like, essentially, um, diet, uh, undiagenically, we hear, uh, or diagenically, oh, crap, I forgot which is with. Okay, diagenically is when you hear sound that the characters in the story are not currently hearing. Non-diagenic would be... Okay, non-diagenic would be a sound that we as an audience hear that characters in the story don't necessarily hear. Diagenic would be something that both us as the audience hear and the characters in whatever show or movie we're watching here. So uh, yes, diagenically and non-diagenically, I guess you could say the th through narration that was diagenic when it was first uh, when it was first the speech that Toma was giving, and then it became non-diagenic through our perspective because we were listening 
listening to the narration while the battle was going on so i don't know if that would make it diagenic or non-diagenic dialogue i actually don't really know so i'm just going to call it a little bit of both but anyways it was as the narration goes on and toma reveals that you know he he uh he will defeat these monsters through the power of friendship that's when excalibur eventually unleashes its full pot uh, potential and turns into a giant sword which toma then uses to easily wipe the floor with uh the, one of the medusas unfortunately the other medusa does not take too kindly to this and grows even uh, bigger essentially to the size of that sword but fear not this sword can apparently turn into a giant mech and not just any giant mech a giant mech that uses toma as a sword in Soviet Russia, Excalibur pull you from the ground. I do a terrible Russian accent. Uh, this was incredibly funny to look at, and I just love kind of how Toma goes with the flow with this whole thing, just kind of goes, oh well, okay. <laughs> and uh, eventually the second Medusa is defeated, meaning anyone who is petrified from it are released, including Ogami. And we get the happy ending of everyone going back to the base being happy. And of course, Ogami taking full credit to impress his kid. Even though his kid clearly should know that his dad is full of crap because he knew his dad was frozen before. Uh, overall, guys, this was a really fun episode. And like I said, with how much uh, lore that's been dropped in the last seven episodes, it, it was really nice to just take a breather and enjoy just a really fun, action-packed episode. Um, some cool character moments from Toma, like I I mentioned before and I don't know it's it's weird Ren hasn't had that many lines in this episode and same within the previous episode but I feel like because of that it's making me enjoy his character a lot more I enjoy him when he's not talking because then all we have to deal with is his really high energy which is actually the thing I like about his character so I hope that uh you know over time if if we do get more speaking lines from Ren, he I don't want to punch him in the face as much I want as I wanted to when he was first introduced into the show. But I guess we'll have to wait and see on that end. Uh, but I'm also really curious because um, those mech special effects did not look cheap, so I am very curious on how often we're going to be seeing this giant mech. That's you know the Excalibur sword. Uh, at the very least, I do hope we see the giant sword just swinging on its own like we did before it turned into the giant mech. But Overall, guys, really cool episode. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it as much as I did, but if you guys didn't, definitely let me know in the comments below why, because at the end of the day, these are just my A-plus opinions. We here at A-plus Opinions always want to know what you guys think, so definitely let us know in the comments below. Hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, but above all, guys, just remember, keep it A-plus.